friends, welcome back to my channel. Our very first how-to with Agu is going to be all about solo travel. Domestically, of course, because we're still in COVID, post-COVID, kind of. So I'm going to share all about my solo travel adventures um, that I went through in of this year. Okay, so I have five major tips for solo travel. Now, there's a ton of things we could talk about in terms of solo travel, especially domestically, like where to go and my recommendations, and depending on what kind of traveler you are, those can vary a lot. Um, so I want to just keep it broad with these five, and then if you have any questions, please leave them down below. Okay, tip number one is pick a place to go that's either near someone you know, close to someone you know, someone you know has been there, etc. The reason I say this is because, especially if you're extroverted like me, you don't necessarily want to be solo the whole time of your trip. This past month, I traveled for four weeks and I didn't want to be alone the whole time. So I actually bookended my trip. At the beginning, I was with friends in San Francisco and at the end, I was with my sister in LA and my friend Kim in Colorado. In addition, the places I went to in between, those were all places that had either been recommended to me or I knew someone that had been there. Essentially, this is like serves two purposes. Like I said, one, you don't wanna be alone the whole time, especially if you're extroverted, but also just for safety reasons, it's nice. And then the other is truly just to have like good recommendations of places to go and not feel like you're totally out there hacking it on your own. Especially if this is your first solo trip that you're planning, highly recommend. Just find some places that you know where people have been and you know are safe. Now, we are in the US, so most places in the US are gonna be safe to travel to. Um, but in the case that you go somewhere where you've never been before or you don't know anyone that's been before, just share your itinerary with someone, share it with a family member or a good friend or a significant other, just so that they know where you'll be at all times. Do whatever makes you feel safe, but do one of those things. My second tip is kind of related, but a little bit different. So my second tip is do your research. And I know, solo travel, you want to be spontaneous, etc. And you can be spontaneous, but just have in mind what kind of things you could be doing, what areas are safe to stay in. If you need to pay a little bit more to stay in a safe hotel, especially when you're alone, I recommend doing that. Also, a lot of what I did was Google search like where is best to travel to alone or alone as a woman. We all know it's a little bit different than alone as a man, right? So just keep that in mind. The other thing is, if you do your research, you can figure out what things might potentially need reservations ahead of time and what things um, are going to be your like biggest spending items, etc. The last thing on doing your research is really figure out what kind of transportation you need. There are some places where you really cannot rely on Uber, Lyft, other forms of transportation like that. So I really recommend like figuring out if you need to rent a car beforehand, figuring out what type of car you might need, like if it's rough terrain, you might wanna get like four wheel drive, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then also just like understanding if it's gonna be a city where you need to drive or it's a city that's walkable. Okay, my third tip is pack light, but pack broad. And what I mean by this is, just because you can't bring a lot of things doesn't mean you can't bring a large variety of things. So I recommend bringing things that kind of fit for a lot of different um, environments, a lot of different climates, especially for me, I was going from San Francisco to Phoenix, to Portland, to Utah, to LA, to Colorado, like Denver, lots of different climates, all pretty dry and like mild, but some of them were a lot hotter. For example, when I was in Phoenix, it was like close to 100 degrees. And when I was in Portland, it was close to 50. So just keep in mind what climates you'll be traveling in. So for me, here's a couple of really key items to bring. Besides your typical like sweatshirt, sweatpants, jeans, one pair of shorts, I recommend bringing a multi-purpose jacket or a multi-weather jacket 
for me i actually didn't bring a warm enough jacket so i had to buy one um i got this one from the north face really cute like cropped jacket and really warm and actually like very good for like 60 50 degree weather especially if i put a long sleeve shirt underneath it um but i also have like a michael kors jacket that you can kind of like stuff into a little pouch which is really good for packing and um compressing things so that's number one number two i'm really big on the yeti or some kind of water bottle um pretty much anywhere i went i wanted water and i didn't want to keep buying plastic bottles be sustainable bring some kind of water bottle it doesn't have to be a yeti but like some kind of water bottle for me it was really important to keep things cool because i knew i was going to be going to arches um which is really really hot in may so i just wanted something that would keep my water cold um if you're going hiking and you have one of those like camelback water bottles good for you but i don't think it's necessary the other thing i'll say is bring multiple bags so i was i brought like a backpack which i use for hiking and other things and it's just really good for keeping like my laptop and like other things when i'm traveling on the plane then i also brought a little like crossbody bag for when i was in cities because i think no one wants to be walking around a city with like a huge backpack like a hiking backpack just or even if you do go hiking or you're just doing wilderness stuff like for dinner and stuff you don't want to take that and you don't want to be that girl that has like a wallet phone hand sanitizer like everything in their hand so that's another one and then one thing i didn't used to bring on my trips but now i try to bring every time is some kind of like intermediate like canvas bag or something like that this is literally just one i got when i was shopping at reformation um but something like if you go to the beach or like something like that this is too small but your backpack's too clunky and this is foldable so you can just easily like stuff this in any like corner of your suitcase or even like in your purse or in your backpack or whatever and lastly in terms of like things to bring I know I'm gonna sound like your mom here, but bring medication, bring like any specific medications you might need for the duration of your stay. There's also this thing you can do, you can talk to your pharmacy about getting an exception if you need a refill for something. Um, and they can actually give you like two 30 day um, like bottles at the same time if they know, if you tell them that you're gonna be out of town. Um, so if you have any medications that you need to take, think about that. Um, Alternatively, if you're going somewhere with a pharmacy, you can always like plan ahead and have your prescriber actually prescribe it to a pharmacy near you if you're in the US. Um, but then there's a ton of other things which I always bring with me, like just in case of emergency. And on this past trip, I actually sprained my ankle, so there was an emergency. Um, okay, so things that I bring. Uh, Zyrtec, you never know when you're gonna have an allergic reaction, especially me. Melatonin key for switching time zones but also just like if you're nervous sleeping alone in your hotel or whatever if it's your first time very key also for plane rides um thermometer because in the age of covid you always want to have a thermometer handy and actually someone i was traveling with for part of it did have a fever and so we were able to tell um and then both tylenol or acetaminophen and advil and the reason i say both of these is because they actually do different things which I didn't know for a long time, but they do. This one's like more anti-inflammatory and this one's more like fever pain reducer. Um, so just bring whatever you might need on your trip. My fourth tip is kind of like something you can figure out on the way or something you can figure out before you go. But truthfully, for me, it was something I'd figured out before. This was not my first time doing solo travel, so I was able to kind of like plan ahead. And that is figure out what entertains you. You are gonna be spending a lot of time alone. That's what solo travel is. And of course you can meet people here and there, but like anytime you're going to sleep or like anytime you're lounging by the pool or even like hiking and resting, etc. like figure out what entertains you. For me, that's mostly like three things. I journal, so I brought this actually bought this journal um, in Portland at the giant bookstore there. So highly recommend going there if you're going to Portland. So I have a journal um, and then I always bring like one or two books with me. I'm very much like a hardcover or like paperback book person. I'm not a Kindle person, but obviously if you are like, that's awesome. I wish I were. Um, so I brought Matthew McConaughey's book. I also brought um, David Chang's book, uh, the owner of Momofuku. Highly recommend that one as well. Um, but anything that entertains you, 
I obviously watch a lot of YouTube, uh, so that was fun too. Uh, and then I love listening to podcasts, so I downloaded a ton of podcasts because when you're driving kind of in the middle of nowhere, it's nice to have someone in the car with you. Um, I also did this when I lived alone. I would like listen to them while I ate dinner and things like that, so I felt like I was in conversation with someone. Might sound lame, but it's actually really fun. <laughs> okay, my fifth tip is make friends and enjoy yourself. Don't feel awkward when people ask you why you're solo traveling, like feel free to talk to people. I find the best way is if you do like some sort of nature activity or some sort of hike or something, people are always willing to chat. And I got asked a lot like, oh, are you just here alone? And I would just say, yeah. And most people would say, wow, that's so awesome. Like I wanna do that too. So take this as your cue and your motivator to go and solo travel and comment down below where you would solo travel first to if you haven't already. Um, also, if you want any of the links for any of the stuff that I shared um, or any of the places I went to, um, check out the description box below. See you next time.